In this video, we're going to look at a few more ways for you to measure the effectiveness and impact of your coaching. In a previous video, we talked about a few ways that you can measure the effectiveness of your coaching. I'd like to share with you a few more in some specialized cases on this video. So in the first situation, you may be trying to work with a leader to increase productivity and reduce the time spent at work. We often work with leaders who are dealing with overwhelm and they just can't seem to get enough work done and therefore they're taking work home or they're working over the weekend. They just can't seem to enjoy some space in their life. What can we do in a situation like that? Well, we can have the client take a time log a time log is where they actually measure their time spent in 15 minute increments over the course of one to two weeks. We would love to get at least one week's worth of data if possible and more if they have a quite varied schedule. When we take a look at the time log, we can look for areas of improvement, such as reducing the number of meetings they attend, maybe reducing the length of meetings that they held. Can they spend more time working on higher level issues and delegate some of the lower level issues to someone else. These are just a few of the opportunities to create space in a leader's calendar. How would we then measure the effectiveness of our coaching over time? They would do another time log. If they do another time log and they can see that they're now spending more time working on higher level strategic items, they've effectively delegated out the lower level items and they're spending more time at home in their personal life, which has invaluable return on investment of the coaching, we know that we've been effective. So that's a specialized case. Another specialized case is when we're working with an organization to improve retention rates or employee engagement. What would we do there? Well, let's say we're looking at improving retention rates. We can measure the change in retention rate over time but we would probably wanna do this in a longer term coaching engagement. I would say nine to 12 months because it can take a while to move the needle on retention rate. And we would like to really see that it's because of changes that our leadership that we're working with has made that has impacted retention rates. In terms of employee engagement, there are pulse checks that can be done quarterly to see if our employee engagement rate has measurably increased through changes the leader or leadership team have made to improve engagement of the employee base. So those are two unique cases that you can bring measurement to. What about the case where you're working with the owner of a business? Lots of opportunity for measurement there, right? Have we increased revenue of the business? Have we increased the number of leads coming into the business? Have we been able to improve the use of time like we talked about a little bit. Many business owners find that they wear too many hats and spend too much time working in the business versus on the business. So there are many different ways that we can impact the productivity and the business growth and we can measure those things by sitting down with the owner and talking about what should we work on and how will we measure it and then determining what those measurement techniques will be. Last idea I want to share with you is an intangible measurement, but it's something that I alluded to earlier. When I talked about measuring time through the use of the time log, I mentioned that you might put time back into the coachee's schedule, which is invaluable because they can use it on their personal life, right? And improving their personal life. We can't necessarily measure the reduction of stress or the peace of mind that comes from just feeling better or creating a renewed passion for our work. But these are measurable in the sense that our client will know the difference of feeling from the time they started the coaching to now. They will know that there is a difference and they can feel it. We may not necessarily have a tool to measure it, but they'll know. And so I would say that that's something that you can bring to the beginning conversations of a coaching engagement as to how will I know about the impact we want to put in some measurable techniques, but we should also highlight this important intangible benefit, which may have greater value than the actual measurement techniques that we will use. Okay, these are several ideas that you can use. I would love to hear 
your comments and questions related to these ideas. And if you have your own ideas for how to measure the effectiveness of coaching, I would love to see them in the comments below. If you have questions about using these methods or other unique cases, feel free to post them below or email me at michael at barryexecutivecoach.com. If you'd like to learn more about my highly effective executive coach training and certification programs that are held online and in person a few times a year, please visit our website, bayareaexecutivecoachtraining.com. And of course, if you're not already a subscriber of this channel, please do so as I'll be releasing videos regularly throughout the year. Thank you very much and good luck to you. Thank you.